no Senhor. Glória a Jesus. I greet the brethren, the church, those who are following us with the peace of the Lord. Let's stand up, please, in reverence to the word that we'll see in 1 Samuel, chapter 17. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 55. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 55 Primeiro first It's first yeah. Samuel and first Corinthians because he's referring to a letter written to the Lord. When Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son this youth? And Abner said, as your soul lives, O king, I do know. So the king said, inquire whose son this young man is. Then, as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him to him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, whose son are you? young man. So David answered, I'm the son of the servant Jesse the Bethlehemith. Amen. Please be seated. Brethren, we go through all the, we went through the entire man, month of July praying for our family for our houses, for our families, our relatives, because we know how difficult it is to have a family, to have a family and make them family to be united until the end, because that's the proposal of God. The pro, the pro propose of the marriage that's the proposal of God that's it, it is that what God wants to do with the church and his son Jesus a marriage that will last forever all the eternity and we know the world that we live in suffocates that the world, the world with all the bad things, all the interests, uses all the arms, all the resources to try to try to make the family to lose their value, taking away completely that the family has to be together, the family has to be united. Everything that we see around us, the, the media, even the government, we see that the governors, they are, they are going to uh, a, a, diff a different way that's difficult to come back. We see how the world treats that. It was supposed to be different. It's the sign that they don't read the world, the word. And the word says in Thessalonians, 
that holds the operation of the bed. It what holds the bad thing from the world is the church. As long as the church is here, the church is against that. The church is the one that stops that, this operation, these bad things from the man. If they knew that, they would take water. Yeah, they would take water and for the, for the, for the Christians, man. But the world is organized. The mind is made to destroy everything. And we need, as a church, we need to ask the Lord wisdom, discernment for our choices. You know that? We have to, as a church, Church A, B, or C. We have to pray to the Lord. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom to uh, choose right. To choose who represents us. Because otherwise, brother, we're not going to even be here anymore. Yeah, It's going that way. It's going that way. We need to seek the Lord. Ask for help. Give me a sign. The believer needs to show that he's a servant of the Lord. Because the world is out there, you know, shoving it down to our throat, everything that they want, all the ideas, all the, all the things that are going through the waves. But we need, we need to be the opposite of that, opposed to that. Pray is important. To be alert is important, but we need to ask wisdom from the Lord for that. So going back to the text, the family, the family has its place in the society. Yes, it used to. Uh, today, not so much. But that's why the Lord has shown, has separated the month of June, so we can pray with our knees down, waking up early, seeking the Lord, so the Lord can give us a blessing. So that the Lord can give us the condition to have a family, a united family, with one proposal, one goal. It is to go to heaven. That's That should be our goal, our proposal. Our freedom to to serve the Lord, to praise to the Lord. And we'll see that in the world. And we see here the experience that Saul, that David had. The young David. It was rose, uh, rose by God to be the king of Israel. And we see the history that was, was one of the first experiences of David. When he faces, when he faces the giant Goliath, we all know that, the world knows that, how David, how David was taken, how he got there, and why he went there to see his brothers, his siblings, to t take food to the brethren so they can bring news from, you know, for for this for his father, because of the war, Goliath. Goliath was asking someone to fight with them, and the people of God were retracted, scared, scared of, scared of, scared of facing the giant. The people of God were, were retracted. So we see that David, when he went to. He didn't go by himself. He didn't go counting on what he had on his hands. He didn't count on to be young, to be younger than Goliath, to be smaller than Goliath. He would. He went there believing in one person, in the God of Israel, the Lion 
of the tribe of Judah. That was the strength of David. He was not trained. He didn't do any course in a military school. He didn't know how to use any arm, armory, his instruments that a shepherd would have. His clothes were uh, shepherd's clothes. They wanted to put an armory on him, you know, all the strong armory, but he, but he didn't want that. He, I'm going to the way I am, dressing the way I am. I'm not going to believe in any armory, anything. I'm going to the job in the name of Jesus. I'm going to face him. And he went. So he went, and and then Goliath, when saw him, felt disrespected. And they, this, the believer f f wins on, on the prayers with the spiritual resources. The believer wins the battles differently from the world. Because we know that our strength is not on us, it's in God. It's in, it's in God, the Lord and the God of this heaven and earth. And when he came back, when Saul saw David going against the Philistine, oh, this kid is, is brave. He's going to face Goliath. Abner, who's the father of him? Who's the, whose father is, is this guy? I don't know, Abner answered. I don't even know where he came from. Ask him where he came from. And David, when when David comes back, imagine the, you know, the feast that was. Can you imagine? See that scenario. The people, the army of Israel, what it was hidden, and Saul was the one that hid, hid it most. Everybody was hidden. Goliath was asking, you know. Nobody wanted to go. And when David beat the Goliath and comes back, when part of it, when he was holding part of Goliath on his hand, Saul asked, ask, ask him now, who is his father? And David says, King, I'm the son of Jesse. The doubt of Saul was a was a valid doubt, appropriate for that moment, because Saul, when he saw in David that boldness, when he saw that authority, he thought himself, if this kid, like little one, is like that, imagine the father. Imagine how the father would be. His father must beat fire. His father must be uh, even, from, even braver. It was very common. It was that society that patriarchal society with the father and son will get together a lot. The father had his place at, ho at home. The father was a father. He was respected. It's not what we see today. Well, today, the father can even talk to the son. If you, if you, if you, if you raise the volume of your voice, the kids goes under pressure. Father is good only for gift. That's what parents, parents can do anything today. At that time, what the parents, what the parent would say, which it was what they said, and the and the kids would learn with with the parents. They learn, they learn how to work. They learn how to treat the family, to respect family, to protect the family. They learn all that stuff. The mother, mother was a mother. It didn't work like today. Stay home, taking care of all this home stuff, and, and the mother was the one that governed the house. It's like that. Yeah. 
today is not. Today is difficult. In my house, I have to wax the floor. Yes. Yes. Every Saturday I had to wax, the red wax. Scovão. Wow. Like a big brush. You just wax it with brush. In the bathroom. In the bathroom was. It was like David. It was like David. With the, with a good aim. With a good aim. It will hit you. Yes. But mom was respected. She, be, uh, she had a pleasure to be home. You get beaten by the mother, but she was there all the time. But then after you go out, what would go out of this? Today it's all different. Today the world, it's all organized to take away, to take away the values and the principles, the morals, the ethical morals, the, the ethical and the spiritual principles. We don't see that today. Today the system it's it's going to a it's going to a direction. Very difficult. And one of these days we're not gonna have any weddings, nothing, mom. Today nowadays nowadays the kids can choose whatever they want, the sex. Yeah. <laughs> I can be a dog, I can be a cat, can I be a this, can I be a, a bird, I can be whatever I want, a bird, yes, you can choose, and that's how it is today, you see that every day on the news, in England, a family in England, in England, I don't know, I don't know his name. When he's eight, he's going to choose. What's his gender? No, identify. So that's how it is. The world is facing this today. It's going on that direction. And the governors are protecting these type of laws. They are, they are giving up on this. They wanted to please the world. They, they choose to please the world, to have power. Then obey the voice of the Lord. And those who want, want to obey the voice of the Lord are being stepped in, stepped on. That's what we see today in the world. But David, when he presents to the father, his father's name is Jesse. There's a revelation when David presents his father prophetically. He presents who? The, the Lord Jesus, our Father in heaven. David here is the person of Jesus. He is the person of church, and the church and Jesus is the head of the church. We need, brethren, to give this testimony to the world that's out there. Because our victories, our, our battles have to be won this way with the spiritual resources. With the armory, the spiritual armory, we have to pray. But to act with wisdom within the spirit. So our victory, our victory can be seen in the world. Wow, this family is a believer. That's a different family. I hear. I hear songs from that house. We have, we have neighbors, we have work co-workers, we have people that are always looking at us. And they want to see, to see, to see, to see, see, they are believers. If they were not believers, they wouldn't get what they got. And how do they get these things? And it's the moment that we must say, because I know a, a God. This God is good for me. 
This God is my father. He's from Bethlehem. Bethlehem says what? The house of the father. The father. The house of the bread. At the house of the father, we have everything. We have the right for everything. We have the right to speak with God directly and be heard by him. David presents his father because father was everything. He was the one that would give the identity. Father was the one that gave protection. A father was all that. And we see that in the presence of the Lord. Because the church, because the church when it goes up in the house of the Lord, it feels protected. Here, we receive our sanctification. It's, it's not the it's not the last name that we receive from the from the our parents. It's a new identity. We are citizens of heaven. We're not citizens of this world. We're not we're not walking towards the death. We're walking towards the eternal life in Jesus. We have the mark of Jesus. The sign. The blood of Jesus is upon us. It's in it's within our hearts. David presents his father, Jesse, the same way we have to present our, our God, our eternal father. The church needs to have the experience. We need to live that. And us as parents, we need to take our kids to have experience with the Lord. Jesse, David, did not leave that because he found out that when he went to face Goliath, he knew that his father would, was serving the God of Israel. It's the same God that opened up the, the sea. That the same God that, that took care of the people that lived in the desert for 40 years. The shoes didn't worn out. There was no lack of food, no lack of water. There was no lack of direction. That's the God that David served because his father was a witness of this. And this is what we have to pass on to our children. We have a commitment with eternity. For the parents that are here, that are listening to us, pass this on to your children to give. Teach them to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord to read the word. Teach them to pray to the Lord, to sanctify to the Lord, and to keep themselves to the Lord. And you're going to have a son or daughter like David that will honor you until the end of your days. And you see your son and your daughter on your side, getting married, acquiring a family in the presence of the Lord. That's why we pray to the Lord. Please have mercy, Lord. Bless our houses, our family. We cannot open our hands. We cannot give this away. We cannot be repri reprimanded on this, waiting for the giant like God Elias. We have to act, and the act in the spirit, seeking the direction of the Lord, passing through our kids, the inheritance, inheritance that was given to us. There's no bigger joy than a family, a united family, in harmony, in the presence of the Lord. There's not, there's not a better moment than coming home and see the peace of the Lord, the joy of God in the house. There's nothing like that. But for that, we need to have we have to have parents that are committed servant of the Lord. Parents that dedicate, that take their time for prayers. And then when the victory comes, you see the testimony, what God did in your life and your children. And God will say, and then you say, it was worth it to serve this God. It was worth it to serve this God. It's not to have a title of believer. It doesn't take you anywhere. 
is for you to have experience with the God, to have your own experience with the Lord. And in the moment of the experience, I go with the trial, go through this trial because I believe in the God of Israel. The Lord is going to give me this giant on my hands. It's going to be it's going to be beaten not because I deserve, but because the Lord fights my battle. Amen. That's in this moment. We're going to close our eyes, and you're going to going to put your life before the altar of the Lord. Put it before the group is to sing a song, and you're going to pray for your life, for your marriage, for your kids, for your life, so the Lord can honor what He's been saying, what He's prophesied for you. Amen.
bendito seja o nome do Senhor. Let's be the name of the Lord. The Lord gave us some gift at the service in one of the gifts. The Lord showed family. They apparently all, all presented appearance. They, had a, they, they appear as a servers. They dress properly. They spoke properly. Even the way they walk and they act. Everything as a a family of uh, believers. But when they would get home, they would find the lights, the lights off. And then the lights are always off. But tonight, the light, when they arrive at home, they would find an angel there. This is literally they would find an angel and this angel would would light up all the all the lights around the house and they when arrive they would turn all the lights on they used to live with the lights on off cook but, but tonight when they would see they saw a lot of dirt on the, all the the furniture all damaged and the angel then showed them the situation of their house. Sometimes, unfortunately, there are a lot of people like that in the houses like that, living in appearances, living a, a life in appearance, showing, pretending they are believers, but at the home, it's a mess. It's dangerous because because when Jesus returns you're not gonna be taken you're not gonna take him, be taken by to the heaven with your prince. Lord the Lord looks to your heart. He knows our heart and he's expected as believer, a servant they live around in the spiritual life. He expects a, a different life. The gospel teaches that. The Bible teaches that. We cannot be believer only on the outside. We have, we have to have a transformation of our life, a new born. That's why important to be part. The importance of the Father that gives us identity, gives us a name, that supply all the things. That's it's good that the Lord is showing this today. And if you identify with this gift, please tonight, brethren, father, mom, call your family, your brethren, seek the Lord, pray to the Lord tonight, and do that. Lord, change our lives. Don't allow us to leave outside of le revelation in the darkness so we can accept your word and live by your word brother the world is like that because we're living the last day of church it's not going to be another another time for the faithful church we'll look at the world 2000 years ago and the church has been it's been established, the Holy Spirit working on the Spirit. We see faces, times, periods of church. We are the church of the last time. Us, all the servants of the Lord that composes this church, the Spirit of Church. And you have the privilege to be here, to be part, to be part of the spiritual church but so take care of what take care of that take care of what God has given you let the Holy Spirit change your life to the way of think the way of act and be a truly servant in the name of the Lord a, to give good testimony 
Don't, don't live in the darkness, hiding things. Let the God operate on you. And the Lord, I will show a, a lady that a lot of wounds in her head. She was not taking care and wouldn't let any doctor take care of her because she was, she was, a, she was embarrassed to to hide all these wounds on her head. So people could not see that the wounds she, she had on her head. But it was very painful and bothered her. But during the service tonight, she asked if anybody needed any help. And the angel asked, and the angel asked if you need any help. And she accepted the help. And the Lord showed what those wounds were. It was a, a trauma from the childhood, you know bad treatment at home from family. And with perhaps a family that didn't live. And there are like many people like that, you know, hurt that bring trauma, bring people that bring There are people like that. The forgiveness is something fundamental f from the believer. It's an open door for you to go to heaven when you when you forgive. So pray to the Lord. So tonight we give you the ask the Lord the help from the Lord. Doctors help. We need a deliver. And you need to be free tonight. God is delivering people that were locked up, that had problems to walk. In this way, the God is doing the cleaning, opening channels, freeing people, freeing hearts, freeing minds of sin. The Lord is doing that tonight. People that were incarcerated, addicted to many things. But the lie of the tribe of Judah is here. The same spirit that was with David, that made David win, it's here tonight. And he can give you this victory. Now, do you want it, the help of God? Do you want the help of the Lord? It's not from me, it's not from a doctor, it's from the Lord. If you want the help from the Lord, you're going to, in your heart, you're going to speak with the Lord. Where are you? I want. In the name of Jesus, I need a little bit. No. In any area, deliverance. I need a deliverance in all the areas. So you can live here in the revelation of the God. Amen? And, and they show another lady that she has an interview, a work interview this week. It's an interview for work. It doesn't say where. It could be office, it could be in a residence, it could be anywhere. has an interview and she's very worried about that but the Lord says that don't worry because the door is going to open Lord Jesus that's the door that's the Lord's preparing for you amen Lord Jesus I take possession of this victory Lord and you're going to testify on the, on the group in the group that we have, an assistance group. Let's stand up, please. Let's have a word of glorification, Lord. We exalt you. We exalt your name, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. Because your glory is in this place. Because you are the one that surrounds our hearts. Because you're the one that supply our needs. 
We bless your name because we walk in your way, Lord. Because you have prepared. You have prepared the eternity for your people. We praise him for the privilege to be part of this work, Lord. We praise you because the, your glory is here in this place. Because tonight's a night of salvation. You have delivered. You have restored, Lord. We glorify, Lord, because you're the one that don't leave us alone. That never, that never leaves us alone, Lord. Bless be your name, because soon Maranatha will happen. Because you, because you are three times sent in the name of Jesus. Amen, Lord. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. The Lord, we want now to, to praise your name for the spiritual gifts, for what you've done in this service, Lord. Because by the faith, because by the faith we can see the operation of the Holy Spirit. By the faith we can hear the handcuffs falling off and our, our people being free. We glorify, Lord for the operation of your spirit. Yeah. Receive, Lord, our, our songs, our gratitude to you, Lord, and give us a victorious week in your presence. And everything that you show in this service can come through in our lives, that we, we, can, have, we can be better people, we can be better servants, better parents, better moms, fathers, children, we can be people guided by your spirit, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. We still pray we did and do in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Savior, Lord Jesus, our, our love, Jesus, our Father. The sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured upon us now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Those who are, would like to have a prayer, we're here available to assist you. We will remind you that this week we're going to have a special event in Orlando for the young, for the younger, for the young servants, all the brothers, especially the young ones. Let's uh, fast Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from from midnight to nine. And, and we're going to have an early dawn on Thursday from, from the Zoom. We're not going to go to Orlando. <laughs> we're going to go there, see the, the blessing of the Lord, to receive a blessing. <laughs> the Lord has something. will bless us. Show us the servant. So these people can uh, have a family and your name can be glorified. We need to go with, uh, with prepare. So this fasting, this early dawn, we need to pray for them, for our kids. Those are the ones that are going to be here tomorrow. They are the ones that are going to be here taking care of our children. They are the ones. They need to have experience with the Lord. And our prayer is important. Amen. To all the peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord, Steve. Peace of the Lord, Cameron.